Coming up ahead in this episode of X Talk Spotlight. I think the benefits to prospective data are the ability to really have a bespoke product or bespoke study or evidence generation approach that's unique to the particular treatment or population of interest. Oftentimes what we see in the clinical trial space is there may be some generic PROs that are used, but there may be a desire to compare what's been collected to real world evidence generation. Prospective data allows us to marry those two data sets together. Hello, and welcome to XTOG Spotlight, illuminating insights from subject matter experts and industry thought leaders. I'm Sonia Hunt. In this episode, we're asking the question, how is prospective data collection differentiating real-world evidence? Real-world evidence is quickly transforming how we hope to understand and address patient experiences, as well as improve product differentiation. To achieve these goals, pharmaceutical companies are working to break down data silos and develop an evidence generation strategy that moves from inferred to specific endpoints. In this edition of XTalk Spotlight, I had the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Kelly Brasil, Senior Director of Business Development at PacHealth, a Quest Diagnostics company. Dr. Brassel brings extensive expertise to the discourse with a strong background in academic medicine and maintains clinical practice at the National Cancer Institute designated Comprehensive Cancer Center. Thank you for taking the time in the spotlight interview, Dr. Brassel. Thank you for having me today. It's a pleasure to be with you. So to start us off, when it comes to evidence generation, why is a unified population-centric dataset important? As we know, especially in the pharmaceutical space, data is being used for many purposes now. Um, that's up to and including either pre- or post-label approvals with the FDA um, based on the increased focus on particularly patient-generated or patient-reported evidence, um, as well as the use of data for uh, reimbursement and, and health plan considerations for inclusion on formulary. Um, and in addition to our providers being able to make best decisions to inform uh, shared decision making with patients about what treatments are best for them. So the concept of having unified data is increasingly important in this space to help support all of these different use cases where the quality and volume of the data, as well as having insights that really allow us to understand patient experience on treatment in a specific point in time is critical to our ability to make best decisions. Now, what are the current challenges for pharmaceutical companies when seeking to use real-world evidence to better understand the patient experience? One of the challenges that has historically been faced is that as real-world evidence has become a more prominent source of information, um, historically it's been used to support either post-label adjustments or further evidence of how people are responding to therapy um, when drugs are being used or therapies are being used in the real-world space that we've historically had to gather data from diverse and important data sources. That can include things like claims data, electronic health record data. Uh, the challenge that we often face when we're looking at these very diverse data sources is that they can come from different groups of individuals at different points in time. So in some cases, we may be looking at data that comes from not necessarily unified to person data sets where we're looking at composite or aggregate data that helps to give us insights but may not be able to tell the full story of what's being experienced by individuals at a particular point in time. And then for data sets where we are actually able to aggregate data at the individual level from diverse data sources, we still face the challenge of timing. So uh, someone's fill data, for example, may not be consistent with when their patient reported outcomes were collected, for example. So this really um, points to our need for really directed uh, data sets that are synthesized ideally at an individual level and at a concurrent time point so that the various data sources that we're looking to can overlap and tell a more comprehensive story about outcomes on treatment. 
And in your experience, how and when should pharma companies consider using prospective data versus retrospective data when seeking to gain better insights into their products? Retrospective data is so important uh, because it's available to us when and where we typically need it and allows for maybe more um, expedited analysis of data sets that are readily available. So retrospective data analysis will continue to be an inherent part of pharmaceutical companies' ability to tell a real-world story. However, there are times and scenarios similar to the scenarios that I've spoken with earlier on these responses where we really need to have prospective approaches, either because there are unique types of data that need to be collected. For example, when we talk about retrospective data, we're typically talking about, again, some of the data points we talked about before. They could be from an electronic health record, claims data, and other. Um, but there may be a need for qualitative data, for example, that goes beyond just the numeric values of what someone is experiencing to tell the real lived experience of an individual's experience on treatment. And prospective data planning is so integral to that. It allows us to identify what patients, what scenarios, what types of data are going to be critically important. And I can't underemphasize, especially in light of, of recent CMS guidance in the last couple of weeks, how important the diversity of the individuals from whom we gather this data is to being able to understand how therapeutics are impacting communities, diverse communities at hand. So prospective data may also be extremely valuable in allowing us to identify specific communities of interest that may be underrepresented in historically retrospective data sets. Keeping on the topic of prospective data collection, what are the benefits as well as limitations of this method as a strategy? Anyone will tell you that prospective data can take time. It certainly takes thoughtful planning um, to in, be able to get uh, IRB approval, for example, for the data to be collected in a way that isn't always required of retrospective analysis. So timing is going to be a really important consideration, but it's not one that's impossible to overcome. Planning for prospective data collection even prior to approval, for example, can help set up trials that can launch along with the drug approval and allow us to be able to collect that data in a time-sensitive manner. I think the benefits to prospective data are the ability to really have a bespoke product or bespoke study or evidence generation approach that's unique to the particular treatment or population of interest. It allows for a customization of the data to be collected, for example. Oftentimes what we see in the clinical trial space is there may be some generic PROs that are used, but there may be a desire to compare what's been collected on a clinical drug development study, for example, to real-world evidence generation. Prospective data allows us to marry those two data sets together. So lots of advantages, certainly some disadvantages, um, but not ones that can't be overcome with thoughtful planning. And to wrap up, can you provide a real-life example of how a combined prospective data set helped a pharma company answer an otherwise hard-to-answer question and improve their insight about their product? Absolutely. Well, historically, we've seen scenarios in which um, real-world evidence generation has actually helped to get changes to label approvals um, that have occurred because of the high quality of the data that's been collected. Um, I think that's a really important emphasis that pharmaceutical companies are, are looking at now is how can we use this type of prospective real-world evidence to support either post-label changes or indications. In my own experience, where we've seen this be most successful is in um, gathering data on a particular pharmacologic agent in the oncology space, which involved both patient-reported, wearable, clinical outcomes, and then a qualitative component that really informed how patients were experiencing the drug. And that data is then being used to inform um, different availability or formulations of the drug. For example, the way that the drug is administered to patients in the real world space and for new and forthcoming products for that particular company. Um, so there it gives us an opportunity to really lean in on what's happening with the drug, 
with a particular set of patients and observe changes over time at a clinical level, as well as a patient reported level that has been very robust in informing their approach and strategy for new product to market. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Brassel, for speaking with us today. We really appreciate your time and insights. Thank you so much for having me again. It's a pleasure and I hope that we have a great benefit from those who are listening in. We look forward to learning more about Quest Diagnostics approach to applying real world evidence towards enhanced patient experiences. Thank you all for joining us for this X Talk Spotlight feature. We hope you enjoyed the discussion. 